ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स फॉर सब्सक्राइबिंग टू माई चैनल नेवर एक्सपेक्टेड दैट इवन फाइव पीपल विल सब्सक्राइब एंड सो मैनी पीपल विल वॉच इट सो थैंक यू सो मच टू डे विल सी नाइस गाइडलाइंस टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ऑन एट्रल फिब्रिलेशन एक्सपेक्ट एटलीस्ट वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस और एल्स इट विल बी पार्ट ऑफ सम ऑफ दी एम सी क्यूज आउट ऑफ द कार्डियोलॉजी क्वेश्चन सो वील सी हाउ टू मैनेज पेशेंट विद एट्रल फिब्रिलेशन सो वेन एवर द पेशेंट इज हैविंग रेगुलर रेट हार्ट रेट एंड एप्स इन पी वेव्स एंड ई सी जी so you will assess the need for anticoagulation for all such patients <coughs> uh with atrial fibrillation and with the history of atrial flutter or any recurrence after cardioversion and atrial fibrillation um for this we'll do chadwick score chad svs score uh in this we'll assess the congestive heart failure hypertension which will have one point each age will have two points if it is more than 75 diabetes will have one point a uh, stroke or transient ischemic attack will have two points any vascular diseases like ischemic heart disease or perif- peripheral arterial disease will have one and sex that is female sex will carry one point so if the uh, score which is usually more than or equal to two you will have to offer anticoagulation If it is more than one in female, there's no need because one is for uh, their gender itself. If it is female, then you have to consider ant anti coagulation. So you have to quite understand the literature and the question which is asked, whether you are offering it or you are considering it. Zero, there's no need, of course. Ah, uh, but even if if you do chart the uh, SVS score, ah, uh, you first have to do a transthoracic echocardiography. Why? To exclude valvular heart diseases. Now, if the patient has got valvular heart disease, you actually don't need to do Chad SVS score because that is an absolute indication for anticoagulation. Okay, then uh, how do you calculate? You don't need to uh, sit with a pen and all. While reading the question only, you will have a seventy-five year old female with history of stroke and. Uh, diabetes there itself the score is in first two words only the score has been uh, you know more than or equal to two so there itself you'll calculate this and then after doing the chart svs you'll see the bleeding risk for bleeding risk and this is not giving anywhere uh, for bleeding risk you'll have to do the orbit score now orbit score will have e- one point each so in this you'll see the age which is more than or equal to 74 year you have to 75 If the um if the patient's got anemia, that is if there is reduced Hb, that is less than twelve, or hematocrit which is less than thirty six, if there is some bleeding history, if there is insufficient renal function, or the patient is under treatment with antiplatelet, so in the year also zero to two is low risk, three to four three is intermediate risk, and more than or equal to four is high risk. ठीक है, now after this you will do the anticoagulation of choice. Now generally, you give uh, according to the nice twenty twenty guidelines uh, for BTE. Uh, do acts are the anti uh, coagulants of choice for everything for venous thromboembolism for pulmonary embolism, which we'll do later. So here you will give these uh, drugs, uh, dabigatran, which is an oral anti coagulant. Uh, IV version is bevalorated. So you are will give apixaban, dabigatran, idoxaban, or rivaroxaban. That was the anticoagulation part. Now we will see the uh, management part of atrial fibrillation. This is again according to the twenty twenty one nice guidelines. Uh, acute condition you see if the patient is hemodynamically stable or unstable. If the patient is got hypertension or heart failure directly, you will go for electrical cardioversion. But if the patient is stable and the history is less than two days or forty eight hours, you'll do either rate or rhythm control. In rate control, which is the first line in all, okay. Ah, uh, in this you will give beta blockers, uh, B C D, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin. Now mostly the questions are asked on digoxin. ठीक है ना डिजॉक्सन इज नो मोर द फर्स्ट लाइन वाई बिकॉज इट इज लेस इफेक्टिव एट कंट्रोलिंग द हार्ट रेट ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज सो इफ द पेशेंट इज यंग एंड यू नो एक्सरसाइज प्रोन गोइंग फॉर वर्क एंड ऑल यू कैन गिव डिजॉक्सन वेर यू विल प्रिफर डिजॉक्सन स्पेशली इन द पेशेंट यू हैट फेलियर 
in old people with little or no uh, less exercise frail you you might prefer digoxin theek hai then you rate control will the will be the first line in almost all patient except if there is a reversible cause of atrial fibrillation if you find a cause which can be reversed if there is heart failure due to atrial fibrillation <laughs> primarily due to atrial fibrillation then new onset now this i am contraindicating coexistent heart failure and this so we'll see that later new onset less than 48 hours theek hai first uh, episode in that you will prefer rhythm control atrial fib- uh, flutter with uh, suitable for ablation you will prefer rate con- rhythm control clinical judgment rhythm will be better ठीक है इफ यू हैव सम क्लिनिकल जजमेंट दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ रेट कंट्रोल रिडम कंट्रोल विल बी बेटर देर ऑल्सो यू कैन गिव रिडम कंट्रोल नाउ वॉट इज रिडम कंट्रोल यूल गिव अगेन बीटा ब्लॉकर्स देन यू हैव ड्रोन आर ड्रॉन विच इज द सेकेंड लाइन एंड यू हैव एम ए ड्रॉन दिस यू विल प्रिफर इन पेशेंट विद हार्ट फेलियर ठीक है देन मोर देन और इक्वल टू फोर्टी एट आवर्स Uh, or the timing is uncertain you will go for rate control you will either prefer and 3 weeks you will give anticoagulation before <coughs> doing the cardioversion now here you have the 2 3 4 rule what is 2 3 4 rule this is basically a mnemonic 2 days uh, more than 2 days of atrial fibrillation you will give 3 weeks anticoagulation before cardioversion and 4 weeks anticoagulation after cardioversion now you have to remember the fact that anticoagulation after cardioversion is more important than before cardioversion because the risk of thrombosis increases after cardioversion so remember this 2 3 4 which is very important will help you in your exams now uh, what are the other uh, ways we can uh, treat atrial fibrillation the other way is uh, catheter ablation now when will you do catheter if there is no response with rate or rhythm control and if the patient wishes for catheter ablation rather than having some medication so in this case also you will assess and choose you can choose catheter ablation so what what do you do basically use radio frequency or cryotherapy and you will aberrate these uh, aberrant electrical uh, pathway which is being formed between the pulmonary vein and the left atrium so this activity you will uh, you know do uh, uh, ablation of this pathway between the pulmonary vein and the left atrium now this catheter ablation you have to counsel the patient it will only control the rhythm and it will not reduce stroke risk even if the patient remains in sinus rhythm theek hai so it will not reduce so in this case also you will have to give anticoagulation now again you will ca- calculate the chart sfs score if it is zero then you will give for two months if it is more than one then you will give for a longer term long term anticoagulation now this is not mentioned complications of catheter ablation is cardiac tamponade a uh, stroke pulmonary vein stenosis and uh, the success rate is 50% so it is quite successful and uh, 50% will recur within 3 th- months the remaining fee and but these will also re- re- resolve spontaneously okay even if they recur they will resolve if it, if you give single uh, uh, catheter ablation more than 3 years after more than 3 years this 55% remain in sinus uh, rhythm if you are giving multiple uh, catheter ablation then all then 80% are in sinus rhythm uh, after 3 years so this is all about atrial fibrillation in a very short time very important topic do revise this video at least once or twice all the best thank you